Bob's stays, creates other The body is born, it develops, stays, creates other bodies, dwindles, and then vanishes. The foolish men want to make a permanent settlement of the perishable body. Let's give up this temporary body and take a new one. Again, to arrange for another term of society, friendship, and love. Again, to family. They forget their permanent identity and become foolishly active for impermanent occupations, forgetting altogether their prime duty. Saints and sages like Vidura approach such foolish men to awaken them to the real situation. But they take such shadows and saints' sides of society, and almost all of them refuse to hear the words of such shadows and saints, although they welcome Shobato shadows and so called saints who can satisfy their senses. Vidura was not a sadhu to satisfy the ill gotten sentiment of Vidurashtra. He was correctly pointing out the real situation of life and how, can one, how one can save oneself from catastrophes. Omgyan to Mirandasya, Ganajana Salakaya, Namaste is there, Mati Deve, Golden Mali, which I Here is a Sasunyavadi at the other Sitarne. One should call Bantarubischa, Ripa Sindhu, the Avicha, Titanum, Bavane, Bio, Vaishnavi, Bio, no Maha, Jai Sikh Krishna, Jai Sikh Krishna, Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari. Mm. So, Vidura is going to key and continue to give very poignant and direct, poignant and every very powerful instructions. I should have said this, I should have said that, I could have said this. He wants to get, make sure that everything needs to be said to cut away his attachments. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. The screen is jumping around here. It's, oh, going, just, uh, it's going to my Facebook channel for some reason. Yeah, it's live streaming there. Uh, all right. It's okay, Guru As Prabhupada says, people do not appreciate because they say what well, you really don't want to hear, although what they say what you really need to hear. And therefore, when people don't really look for, that's why Srila Prabhupada's movement, although he was here for 10 years he uh, he only made 5,000 disciples not even which is not much for 10,000 for 10 full years of preaching but those who came 
for looking for truth. So of course, there were others who came and went. And we might say that those who came and went were more numerous than those who came and stayed. As Srila Prabhupada said about our movement, don't be surprised who leaves, be surprised who stays. Now that's not a, a statement in order for intimidation. It's a statement that helps us understand that Prabhupada's giving the highest. And the saints And sages who come who are actually worthy of such titles, they're telling us this material world is a place of suffering. And whatever you have and gained in this material world will be lost in due course. right to again aspire for that position where there is no more birth no more death no more disease no more old age no more miseries of the body and mind no more miseries coming from other living entities complete absence of all calamities coming from all forms of life I, I, for life is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of bliss. You see, in this material world, people chase after these things. The medical scientists are playing around with various types of experiments, is trying to con prolong the life of others or try to make life, uh, you know, forever. Of course, material energy doesn't allow that, and therefore their emphasis is a waste of time. There is a particular science is called chirogenics. I don't know if you've heard such thing. Chirogenics is that uh, they have come up with this formula program that. Uh, When you get old, you can pay a large amount of money, and then uh, they will take your body and put it in a deep freeze so it doesn't deteriorate. And then they promise when they discover the secret of life, they will inject it into your body, and then you will come back and be able to live more. And people foolishly think that this is actually going to work. Any fool knows that <laughs> the material body is what it is. <laughs> it's temporary and it's the end at a certain time. And you can't keep it alive beyond a certain point. It's under the laws of God, under the laws of nature. But people pay thousands of dollars for this program. There was one such uh, yeah. famous cartoonist, we all have heard of him, his name was Walt Disney. He became a multimillionaire. And at that time, his, his money was like phenomenal because that was more than 50 years ago. To be a multimillionaire 50 years ago is like being a multi-billionaire today. And uh, he went for this program that he paid, you know, millions of dollars to have his body frozen in this uh, deep freeze that was charged up by electrical current. And so he paid the money after he, before he died. And then when he died, his body was put. But then what happened was his relatives were complaining. So some were saying, well, he's going to come back and therefore his fortune cannot be divided up. And others were saying, no, he's dead. We should take the, you know, we should take the inheritance. So there was a big battle and it went to court. <laughs> Finally, one member of the family 
family who wanted the fortune secretly came into the place where his body was and pulled the plug on the electrical current that was keeping the deep freeze alive. So much for Walt Disney. This is a true story. You see how ridiculous and how much people waste time trying to prolong something that is not prolonged. Mm -hmm. Everything works under the influence of the material energy. The material energy is controlled by Krishna. Sanction. So if Krishna wants you to live hundreds of years, then he, he can do that. If Krishna wants you to leave your body today, that will happen. And so it's all under the control of the Supreme Personality Godhead who uses his energies to fulfill his will. But a devotee doesn't worry about these things. is just using their time. Here we can see Dhritarashtra is so foolish. He's lost everything. Now he's living like a household dog. And he's, uh, his body is deteriorating, showing all kinds of uh, problems, which come by way of old age. And uh, he's still living carefree. Can't see. Inevitable time will soon take everything. But, but Vidura, He's wise. He knows that this is the have a disease in the material world. It's called amnesia. Now, amnesia is a disease, and if you sometimes a person will fall and hit their head quite severely, and they'll lose memory of everything. Their memory will be completely lost. They don't know who they are. They don't know what their name is. They don't recognize anything around them when they come back to consciousness. They can't, you know, they're completely like a child who has no knowledge of anything. It's called amnesia. And uh, there's different degrees of this amnesia, but it becomes complete. Well, the conditioned soul is much more or less afflicted by amnesia. They forget who they are. They are. We think with his body. They forget that they have a relationship with God that's eternal. And they forget that their real home is not in this world, but Adatu Brahma Jigyasa now become fully self realized. This is what you're actually looking for eternal life, free from coming again, life after life. Here it says, here, well, Padre really gets, gets right to the point. And that's the nature of Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam doesn't patronize. And that's why it's considered to be the topmost of all religious scriptures, because it glorifies the Supreme Lord and the process of pure devotional service. And, but it also gives very clear and very direct instructions of what is the nature of this world. So as devotees, we have to know how this world works also. And Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains it, it works under his direction. There's three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, according to how, what is the quality of our desires. If we want to, if we want to desire a good life, if we're charitable, friendly to all, inclined to uh, 
the higher principles. We live in a we live in a somewhat of a world of uh, uh, what do you call satisfied goodness, or in the Lord that a world of illusion that everything is all right, and I am all right. We live in a world if we have desires to accumulate more and more material things and enjoy those things, we worship the deity Ganesh and or we, we worship the material energy by trying to make many plans to increase our position in the material world. So, and if we don't care about anything, we want to do whatever we want, whenever we want, we live recklessly and we, you know, uh, pay, patronize all of our desires for enjoyment. We live in the, the, we live in the uh, mode of ignorance. So people live in, in this world. That's why people sometimes they say, well, we have to make everyone equal in this world. We have to have equality. But there can never be equality in this world because this world has different radiations of is a pure spiritual part personal Krishna. And therefore, on the spiritual platform, we are all the same. Therefore, we go in the sense that we have equal opportunity to, to understand our real identity and make a solution to all problems of life. And bhakti yoga is available for everyone and anyone, but very few will take to it because of the attachment to and the Bhagavatam continues to give us uh, narrations of the histories of great souls and other personalities who found themselves attached just like we have in the ninth can king his name is Pudurava Pudurava was a pious king and he performed some austerities and he wanted to marry a beautiful girl so he got the opportunity to marry uh, one one of apsara from the from the heavy planets one of the uh, indra's society girls um, i forgot her name somebody can remember her name urvasi no was it urvasi could been. And uh, and so she agreed to marry this king, but she set up a series of conditions. And it's a long pastime, but he broke one of the conditions, and because of that, she left him. And now he was feeling completely despondent. And and. Uh, The sound is offered is dropping, you're saying is it's can you hear me now? Yes, um, I just, there are some gaps in between. Sometimes it freeze and then it comes back. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me I think it's this external drive here. I don't know why it does that. It's supposed to work. But it, it's working intermittently. Uh, Speak directly. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. So it'll be a little less in volume, but at least it'll be continuous. Thank you. And uh, so he was beyond himself in grief when he lost uh, Urvasi's association. And he chased after her. Finally, he got to the point that he became so frustrated that he took up spiritual life and became and became and actually achieved liberation. So the point is that there are the Bhagavatam teaches us in the lives of great personalities 
you'll see how many of these great personalities, King Yayati, he was also very lusty, chasing after women. He couldn't get enough of uh, women association. And there are many other examples there. So we hear the lives of great kings in the Bhagavatam to teach us, you know, what even great personalities fall victim to the material energy in such a complete way that they forget everything. But because they're great personalities, because they're surrounded by persons who are saints and sadhus, they somehow wake up. And that's the, that's the message of the Bhagavatam. It's the great souls appear to give that message. And so you're hearing it again in the form of Vidura trying to awaken his uh, very attached elder brother who's quite old. And so the message is that um, the human form of life is both rare and fortunate. It's rare in the sense that to get a human form, it takes many, many births in different species of life to attain ultimately the human form. And to get, the, to get that, the one is fortunate because only in the human form of life can one actually make a solution to all problems and go back home, back to Godhead. Unfortunately, we see People come to Krishna consciousness, they stay for some time, they practice the process, then their material life becomes difficult for some while. And rather than continuing its spiritual life, they try to again fix their material life and give up spiritual life. Uh, this happens. People think that a perfect material life or a stable material life is the, is the solution the happiness, but ultimately that stability is also temporary and again will be lost in due course of time, even if they do attain it, which is not guaranteed. So but one thing is guaranteed, if you serve Krishna and you engage seriously in the process of devotional service, you will purify your heart of all material attachments and you'll gradually reach to the point of self-realization. And once you reach a certain level of self-realization, so you will also understand that there is nothing that can compare to devotional service. You know, one will feel satisfied in each and every condition of life and will continue until they reach the perfectional stage. But because we haven't got that higher taste, or because we haven't, we we get too much attached to our material life. We can't see the beauty of Krishna consciousness or the all complete nature of Krishna consciousness. But Prabhupada used to say, just give this one life to Krishna. That's all. He would say, How many lives have you been trying to become happy in this material world? And you're still trying to do it. Now, this one life, just give it to Krishna. And so he's making a kind of a concessionary statement that if you do that, then you'll understand that whatever else is there is at best just supportive or secondary to a relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So one has to go for it. And that takes, we need to be serious in our spiritual practice. And as we could become more and more serious, it means we have to be regulated, chanting every day, reading the Srimad Bhagavatam every day, hearing from Bhagavatam, discussing the principles of Bhagavatam, Bodhiyantas Parasparam, Kutiyantas Chimam Nicham, Tishyanti Cha, Ramanti Cha, that devotees find great happiness and pleasure discussing about me, Krishna says. They like to talk about me. They enjoy that. They can't, they can't think of anything more wonderful than talking about me. Tushyanti cha, Ramanti cha. Tushyanti means it performs great happiness. Ramanti. It's, uh, it's, it's blissful. And so Krishna consciousness is the higher taste. <laughs> 
but the but if we don't get the higher taste we still go for the lower taste because the nature of of the living entity's existence needs to taste satisfaction in some aspect so without the higher taste then one will still look for taste in the material way and that is the lower taste or the taste that is ultimately ends up tasteless because it's temporary but devotees should not be discouraged if they don't have the higher taste in krishna conscious they should continue on in their devotional service and work in such a way as they can get that higher taste it's available the Dhritarashtra obviously doesn't have any taste. He's just hanging on to his idea of life. And Vidura has waited for that situation to develop before he could actually speak these words. When you, when you try to explain eternal religious principles and detachment from the material world to a person who is nicely situated materially, and, he, and they... They falsely think everything is fine. The words don't really go anywhere. But then again, when things change, then people change, and then they want to hear more and more. Just like there's that simple little, you know, story. It's not a story. It's more like an antidote. A man is sitting on a branch of a tree and he's sawing on the inside of the branch he has his saw and he's cutting friend comes along and says hey if you keep, keep sawing you're gonna fall nah nah everything's okay i'm fine and so he continues and then he falls and he runs to his friend wow you are a great prophet how are you able to understand the future <laughs> but that's the principle of the saints and sadhis because they speak the words of Krishna coming from Bhagavad Gita and other scriptures, Srimad Bhagavatam. And therefore, they don't make up anything themselves. And because they have realized what they're speaking in their own life, they can speak with such surety that which has effect and, he, and waking up people to their actual <clears throat> position as eternal servant of Krishna. So um, this section of Srimad Bhagavatam really gives a clear lesson of how attached the person can be despite that there's nothing left materially. Prabhupada tells the story of one person called Kailash. Kailash was a, he was an entrepreneur. He had a nice family. He was pious. And uh, he had a, you know, everything was going, but, but Kailas was getting older. He was getting old. And so he came across Narada Muni. And Narada Muni said, oh, Kailash, you know, you're getting old. You know, uh, why don't you take up self-realization? It's about time, you know. Kailash said, yeah, yeah, in due course of time, no problem. But right now, I'm, I have the business and my children are here and I have to train them to work the business. Uh, and so Narada leaves. And after some time, Narada is thinking, I have to go back and see how Kailash is doing. So he goes back. Kailash is there. And he says, Kailash, oh, you're much older now. You're getting closer to that end. Now you should don't waste time. Take up self-realization. Kailash says, yeah, I know that. But I've been trying to teach my children how to run the business. And they also have their children. I'm their grandfather. I have to teach them how to raise their families properly. So I'm not ready. So Nara goes away. After some time, Nara returns a few years later. And then the grandchildren are grown up. And the children are getting old themselves. And uh, he's, he and says, well, where's Kailash, your grandfather? Oh, he died. 
And then uh, Nard is feeling, oh, just see, we missed this one. So he's feeling unhappy, he wasn't able to help Kailan. So he's leaving, he's walking across the estate, it's a big house, and there's a dog out there. The dog comes running up to Narada. Narada looks at the dog, and he can recognize that the dog is Kailash. And the dog starts to speak. And he says, Narada, it's me, Kailash. Narada says, oh, wow, okay. Are you ready now? Well, I'm the dog, the guard dog here. Somebody has to guard the estate with my children in it. So can't go. So Narada leaves. Prabhupada's telling this story. And then he goes back after some time to see what they, what's that dog, where's that dog? And then there's no dog. He's looking around. So he goes into the house and he sees the family there. He says, what happened to that guard dog that you had outside? They said, well, he died. And then Narada feels unhappy again and he's leaving. And as he's walking out, he hears this sound coming from the bushes. Psst, hey, Narada, over here. And he's thinking, where's that? He goes over in the bushes and he sees a snake. And the snake talks to him. He says, Narada, it's me, Kailash. Narada says, are you ready now? Make, you can become self-realized. And the snake, formerly Kailash, says, well, the dog died and somebody has to guard the estate. So Narada starts thinking of a plan. So he goes into the house and he said, you know, he says to the family members, you have a snake in your yard? Oh, really? And so they come out with sticks. And they're, they're chasing the snake and beating the snake with sticks. And this snake, which is their former grandfather, father, he's yelling. And then Narada says, are you ready now, Kailash? <laughs> and Kaila says, I'm coming. <laughs> so that's what it takes sometimes to break an attachment. That people are so attached that they can't give it up no matter what. <laughs> But the saints and sages, they don't give up. They keep trying. And they think of different ways. Now, this is what we Vidura is doing here. He's getting right to the point. Vidurasa can't respond in any kind of defense because he has no defense. He's simply listening, but at the same time, he's not getting it yet. And you'll see as the verses go on. Things change. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru uh, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for a nice explanation of the material nature and devotional nature. <laughs> so, uh, I will open up the forum for any questions, any realization, any comments from the devotees. So devotees, please, uh, if you have any question, you can raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask the question, or maybe you can type in the chat and I can read that out. Stop share the screen. Yeah. Yes, Shilpeshma Prabhu, you can go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances with the Spirit of Prabhupada. Maharaj, every day I endeavor for Krishna, and sometimes you know we start the day happy, and other times we've been I, I chanted, I felt happy, I felt blissful. Next thing I know, I'm in anxiety, fear, and depression. And it's frustrating sometimes, Maharaj, because every day I'm doing what I can to endeavor for Krishna. And it's just like the material nature keeps whacking me. No, you still have those uh, tendencies and they keep coming back. The fact that you're feeling happy in Krishna consciousness to some degree shows you're making advancement. 
but it's not steady. You remain in these things, and then you'll become more steady. Depending on how deep our attachments are, not only in this life, but cumulative from previous lives, Krishna consciousness manifests itself in a step-by-step -step process. It takes some time. We should not get discouraged. The indication is we can see it works in the lives of others. And we also get some understanding by our own practice. So these things that are coming there, fear, anxiety, or whatever, is simply our bad past karma, again, reappearing. And that will continue on and off. And then the spiritual side will become greater than the material side and gradually push it out. It's a process. Just like if you're diseased, say you have 105 fever, or in the UK, I think, what is it? Say you have a fever of 42. That's pretty high. So, you know, maybe one day the fever is 41.5. It's not 42 anymore. It went down a little bit, but still the fever is there. So material life is like a fever, like a disease. And it reduces gradually as long as you keep taking Krishna conscious medicine. But if you stop taking the medicine, then the fever will return and increase. So stay with the process. It works. <laughs> It's a matter of, and the most important principle that makes Krishna conscious work is determination. We have to develop determination because the material energy will try to block our determination by enticing us in different ways and at the same time uh, discourages, discouraging us by saying that this is too difficult. So we remain determined. And determination is the feature of the will. Just like if you want to do something and you really want to do something, you put your mind to it, you work, you gather all the knowledge and the paraphernalia you need in order to uh, make it happen. And you become, I mean, you become really enthusiastic to work at it. People do that. They want a job. They go for it like that. They want a scholarship in some institution. They, they live in that way. So they, people make their goals in the material world and they're determined to somehow or other achieve them. That feature of determination is required, especially in spiritual life, because the resistance will also be there. The attachments are still there. Stay determined. And you might say, well, how do I become determined? That is, uh, you associate with devotees who are determined. That's the best way. And you follow the process in a regulated way, staying regulated in your spiritual activities. Patience is also a principle of spiritual life. Patience is a feature which teaches us that if you work in a certain way, things will happen. It's, happen it's not happening now, but I have the formula. Therefore, with enthusiasm, intelligence, determination, and then patience, then Krishna consciousness gradually manifests just like a child gradually grows within the womb of the, of the mother. And when it's ready, it comes out.
do you have any more tips for maybe dealing with all the fears in the mind? Because they can really throw you at times. Yeah, don't listen to them. <laughs> Replace them with Krishna consciousness activities and thoughts. We have to be aware where our mind is going. The mind will move around. Therefore, we have to take shelter of Krishna in the form of Rishi Cage. Rishi Cage means one who controls the mind and senses. So Krishna will help you if you take shelter of Krishna and work in that way. That's the beauty of Krishna consciousness. All success really comes by way of Krishna. Our endeavor for success brings simply the mercy. That's it. And it's when Krishna is pleased that everything happens automatically. Thank you, Mahat. Uh, there is a question in the chat from Sonal Mataji. And she's saying, Hare Krishna, humble obeisance, Maharaj. Are emotional attachment to the family members classified as material? Or are they there regardless of our spiritual development? They're there to some degree. But if we get overly attached in an emotional way, then we're, di we're diverting our attention away from, from Krishna. So there is some emotional connection there, and that's normal. But you have to see how, how you react to that. If your reaction causes you to get uh, disturbed by success and failure in the relationship, then that emotion is contrary to your spiritual life. You have to control your emotions. And emotions are controlled by engaging in service. So in our relationship with anyone, we try to serve. But Krishna can fulfill our emotions. Krishna can satisfy everyone. We can become completely emotionally satisfied with Krishna. But we still may have some attachment in an emotional way for a family. But it shouldn't interfere with our relationship with Krishna. If it does, then it's Maya. Then it's, then it's material. Right. Um, yeah, I have a one question that uh, as per the verse, normally like uh, people don't want to leave their body, like they are fearful of death or they don't want to die basically. But on the other hand, some people take their own life. They're like, so what is their consciousness normally, what they're like going through that they are forced to take their own life? Complete frustration. When they're suffering, people generally don't take their own, their own life when they're suffering on the physical level. But people take their own life when they suffer on the mental level. Suicides are mostly emotional traumas for frustrated lifestyle and desires. They're acting in the wrong way and they're trying to get something that they can't get or trying to get free from something that, that is 
causing them unhappiness. They can't do it. So they think it's better to die than go through this suffering. So they, they opt, they think death is actually a, a way out of the suffering. But it's not. Because by, by, by destroying the material body, you still have your material desires. The material desires don't go. Because they, they reside in the subtle body. And therefore, one becomes a ghost. So suicide usually lead, leads to ghostly bodies, which means they have an intelligence, the mind, the false ego, but no physical body. Therefore, ghosts live even a more miserable life because they have material desires, but they can't fulfill them because they don't have the, they don't have the instruments, the material body, to fulfill their desires. Therefore, they attack other living entities and try to fulfill their desires to others. The suicide is not, an, it's not a solution. It just compounds the problem. But people suffer so much that they think there's no other way. Sometimes you know, people have a loving relationship with her with some person and that thing falls apart and they think there's no 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 per, there's no reason to live anymore there's one story it's kind of interesting story it's kind of humorous too in one sense this was in a very high rise building. I think it was, might've been New York City or some, some city. Uh, boyfriend and girlfriend are, are up on one of the higher floors in this high rise apartment building. And they're arguing. And finally, the man says, I'm through with you. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want, you know, I'm just, that's it. I quit and he just stormed out of the place and when walked out of the apartment and left. Now the girl, she's suffering so much. She was beside herself with suffering. She's thinking, oh no, my life is not worth anything. So she decides to end her life by jumping out of the window of the building. And she jumped out of the window and guess what? She landed on her husband who was down on the ground at the time, <laughs> her boyfriend. <laughs> She lived and he died. <laughs> That's his true story. <laughs> you be, you know, they say yeah, that that uh, reality is more stranger than fiction. <laughs> but that's a, that is a story. Yeah. Devotees have told that in some of their classes. <laughs> So yeah, you know, so people will do anything when they're they lose all their intelligence and they just get caught up in this the the, the uh, misery of the moment and they think, what's the use of life? Mm -hmm. So the stronger your attachment is, the more you suffer when the attachment is broken. So the idea of spiritual life is to gradually reduce our attachments in this world and then ultimately become attachment free when, when, when we reach old age and that way we can focus completely on Krishna. Therefore, it says that one should retire from the family after the age of 50. In other words, when the children are grown up and there's no more need for family life, the children are on their own. They have their family. But people don't do that. They want to live their life through their children. Maybe they, they go over their children's house and live there. That's what Dita is doing. So the yeah, Revati Mataji, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Prabhu. Uh, 
हर कृष्णा गुरु महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माई हम लोग प्रॉपर सो गुरु महाराज जस्ट वॉन्ट टू क्लैरिफाई ऑन लाइक काइला स्टोरी लाइक वेर ही गॉट अटैच टू हिज किड्स इवन ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रन ऑल्सो ही वॉन्ट टू टेक केयर but um, that's an attachment as you said like after 50 we have to take a completely retire from the family life but uh, if we guide uh, children in krishna consciousness um, staying with them helping them is that also an attachment um, up to a certain point you you required to do that but then after a while they have their own life so you you give them whatever you can give them for the first 15 years of life that's the most important part they need you all the way up to the age of 15 16 after that then you just give them general directions on how to live life mm -hmm. so but you have to allow them to to live you can't control their lives and that creates so many children. children after a while resent their parents because the parents Still want to control their life even after they're grown up and married, and that destroys family. That destroys the families. You know, I, I see that all the time. I can I can mention a number of devotees who are going through that right now. The parents, even after they're married, still like to control their life. and it causes so many uh uh what is it calamities within the family so you have to give them all you can up to a certain time and then ultimately for the girl the the father is meant to make sure that she is nicely settled and when she his duty is to make sure she gets married when the girl is gets married his his duty to the family is done the boy can work on his own and also make his own family life but the girls really need guidance from their parents nowadays they don't take it and therefore they wind up in a lot of problems mm -hmm. depends on the culture that one is brought up in but we should try to keep to take care of the family up to a certain point and then after that yes yes guru mahesh thank you yeah because um, uh, indian culture we see that a uh, lot uh, parents uh, you know even after kids grow up they try to control uh, them the worst thing yes Real yeah yes uh, let them make a few mistakes and learn to learn from life itself give them everything you can give them when up to a certain point then they have to move on and learn. just think about your own self as you were growing up you have to take your life at after some time yes guru maharaj <clears throat> yeah so this devotion service is very important if you don't have this uh, maybe we try to control kids when we become old because we don't have any other purpose so dawtailing and uh, practicing this bhakti yoga is very important so at the time of old age at least uh, we can completely engage in devotion service yeah that's good then then you can Of course, there's more to it than that, but ultimately, old age means just before death. And one has to prepare for death by focusing on Krishna completely in the later part of life. Mm. Yes, correct. Right. Family responsibilities are finished. Yes, correct. Right. Yeah. So, um, Guruji, just I have one follow-up question. Is it okay? Can I ask? Yeah. Uh, like um, uh, as you mentioned like attachment right uh, anything like that is uh, um, coming through emotions it's like an attachment so we should have a constant check on ourselves whether like uh, we are taking decisions based on emotions or uh, uh, like in a detached way like as a duty so how can we like uh, practice that like uh, can you please a little bit uh, give some more like uh, 
like our daily uh, examples so we can like you know have that check on ourselves that we are not taking decisions on emotions or you know attachment well emotion is there emotion is part of your the living entities but emotion has to be guided by intelligence if you have pure emotion, then you're going to make mistakes. So emotion is there, guided by intelligence. Intelligence comes from Krishna. Intelligence comes from Guru. Intelligence comes from Shastra. And then there's practical intelligence you can learn just as you live in this world day to day. You understand how to live life. So, yeah, if emotion is not guided by intelligence, it can become uh, kind of like because mm, emotions can also change due to circumstance, but intelligence remains as a, a phenomena that will guide the living entity in all situations. Always use your intelligence. Guide your emotions by your intelligence. They say a man is more inclined to the intelligence, a woman is more inclined to emotion. So when they get married, then they have a balance. They say that. That's, that's not an absolute principle, but it's a general principle. Yeah. So, Guru Maharaj, so if we sharpen our intelligence, if we purify our intelligence um, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, hearing, then you'll, be, then you'll be guided in the right way. Yeah. Then emotions will become pure automatic. It will become, process will become. Yeah, emotions are guided by intelligence. Mm, okay. okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Any more uh, questions or queries from devotees? Uh, I don't see any more much. We already passed one hour. So is it okay to conclude our session here? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, nicely guiding and so clarifying the devotees' uh, doubts and giving a view wisdom on the verse, today's verse, and thank you devotees for joining uh, this session. Um, that's how we'll like conclude here today, and I think maybe we'll meet tomorrow or day after tomorrow as uh, as planned. Um, let's see, I will be available for the next two days. I'll be back on Saturday. Okay, that's noted, Maharaj. So, but class will continue tomorrow as usual. Yeah, the verses get even more I always hear nice to hear you from you. Where do you hear the next verse? You know, it's a little bit humorous, but at the same time, pathetic also. Okay. Thank you very much for today. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.